It's a test. The whales, trying to crush the Nautilus with their sheer mass. Through the windows, you could see their enormous mouths, paved with teeth, their fearsome eyes. The test is nine. Now, I can utilize uh, the crew, and I can utilize the hull. So, pass and collect two treasure or gain one crew, which would be nice. Which I just tried to do and failed horribly. Or um, fail and lose two hull. Don't want to do that. So, I am going to utilize the crew. That's a plus two. And I can utilize a hull, which is plus one. Plus one is two. So, I have a plus four. And I need a nine. Oh, yeah. Easy. Passed. So I can gain a crew or I can get two treasure. I exerted the crew. I'm going to go ahead and gain a crew. And I passed it. Doesn't really give me anything there. It's all right. It's all right. Let's place some ships. One, three, six, and six. One, one, one. One, one, nope. But I'm going to put a ship here in the Arctic Ocean. Oh, geez. The Koenig Wilhelm. It's a capital ship. Three is over here. I can put one there. Matter of fact, I'm not going to, though. I'm going to go ahead and reveal a ship here. Another capital ship, the Sinop. Oh, they're coming out fast and furious. No, two and six. So I am going to go ahead and put one here, a hidden one here, and then I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and reveal one up here. I don't want to fill that C up. And another one. It's an iron side. The Prince Albert. Do you have Prince Albert in the can? Old joke. I know. Take another sip. Now, my differential is pretty good, though. One and six. So I've got five. That's nice. Now, why did I go over here? I do want to um, go ahead and try and do an insight, I believe, here. Insights cost two. No, cost one. <laughs> Great. Exerting ship resources. I'm going to exert... Um, Oh, geez. I'm just going to exert the crew for plus two. Any one treasure. I'm going to use the treasure. That's three. That's five. Um, minus one for revealed ships. There are none. And there are no already uh, revealed uprising tokens. But we can do here the Kamahamas Hawaii. All right, so we've got three, four, five. No minuses. Four, five, six, seven, and five is 12. Inside 12 revolt, I get to place a cube and I get minus two notoriety, nice. And so when I incite, after passing incite action, you may spend one ship resource using DRM to further reduce your DRM. I am going to do that. I'm going to reduce the crew. No. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to reduce Nemo and reduce this to two. Okay, so that cost me one to do. Nemo cost me two. My, I gain two. I can also 
play place in captain's heart. Remove this to gain one Nemo. I'm going to remove that from Nadine to gain one more Nemo back. He's determined. I want to rest again. Rest costs two. One, two. Exerting one ship resource. I'll exert Nemo. That gives me two. Plus one for any one treasure. I don't have any one. Minus one for any warships. No warships. So I get plus two. And my rest. 10, 11, 12 rest. Recruit Sailor gain two crew. That was awesome. One and two. It worked swimmingly. Beautiful. All right. I still have one left. And I'm going to... Hmm. I'm going to move down here to the South Pacific. All right, that's the end of the turn. Another adventure card. Admirals Yi and Nelson. <laughs> right. The crew enlisted a tailless Manx, Admiral Yi, and Lord Nelson, a friendly Jack Terrier. They kept at bay the rats inhabiting the ship's crevices and so they roamed freely. For their duties, they were much respected among the crew. This is a keeper. Pass and gain one action point um, at game's end. Pass. So, let's see. Let's put this down here for now. We're getting close to the end, guys. Let's see how many ships we're going to place. All right, we've got two three, six, and six. So on two, we can't do anything, so we have to reveal a ship. Let's go ahead and reveal a ship over here in the Central Pacific. And it is a battleship. In the North Atlantic, we're going to go ahead, and I'm not going to reveal one here. I don't want to fill that up yet. I'm going to go to the European Seas. Oh, wait. Boy, that sucks. No, I'm going to go ahead and do the North Atlantic. And it's an iron side, the Monarch. Then we have two and six. So I'm going to put two up here in the European Seas. And finally, a non-warship, the Syria. It's a slaver ship. You get plus one crew if you sink that one. And then one more in, in six. I'm going to put it up in the European Seas again. And another non-warship. It's a passenger ship, though. <clears throat> the Napoleon III from France. All right. So those are those. So my differential here is four. I get four things that I can do this turn. What am I going to do? Oh, put that back. Put that back there. All right, I think I'm doing pretty good now. I, I mean, we're getting, our seas are getting full of ships, but we're not in any dire straits really yet. We're getting down to the end of the game. There's only a couple cards left. I guess I could look at them and count them, but I mean, count them. But uh, what do I want to do? I might want to do an adventure. Like I said, I keep saying I want to do an adventure. Because I haven't done one in a while. Exerting any all ship allowance is allowed by the, by the card. Okay, ship reason loss failed. Plus adventure and not as upgrade cards. All right, so let's do an adventure. So I do have a treasure on there. Let's set that aside and see if we can do this first. Now, doing an adventure costs two. And this is shortage, shortage of air. How long, I asked, will the oxygen in the air tanks enable us to breathe on board? The captain looked me straight in the eye. After tomorrow, he said, the air tanks will be empty. This is a test, and it's a 10. It, it's, this is a tough one. Um, you can exert the crew. 
thankfully we went up two so I can exert and get a plus three. Um, so this is a pass, you pass. But if you fail, um, fail and lose one crew or decide now to skip this turn's action phase and you receive zero action points. Well, we're already in the action phase. I guess I would just go down. Let's go ahead and try to pass it. I'm going to exert the crew. I get a plus three. Let's see what happens. Oh, horrible. That's eight. I don't really have anything to add that I can add to it. That's all right. So I failed. Failed and lose one crew or decide now to skip the action phase. I failed it so I don't get the treasure. I'm going to just fail it. Decide now to skip this turn's action phase and you receive zero action points. I'm going to fail it. I'm going to keep that up here and I'm just going to lose all my action points. Great. So that didn't help me any. Let's go on to the next turn. All right. The slave trade. The captain railed about exposing and destroying the slave trade, taking pride in freeing slaves ship by ship and adding some to his crew. Lieutenant Kuhn volunteered to lead raids against slaving ports, but they failed to develop. This is a keeper. When the Nautilus is in the South Atlantic, um, you may spend two action points or only one during a lull turn and raid slave ports. So what you do is you conduct a test. It's nine. You can exert the crew. Pass, gain one crew and gain one treasure. Fail, gain two notoriety and lose one hull. Uh, at game's end, if you still have this, it's a fail. So this is a keeper. This is when you're in the South Atlantic. That's way over here. I don't know, you know, when, if any time, I'll be going to the South Atlantic. But that's what we, we got for our adventure this turn. Let's roll the dice and play some more ships. Let's see if we can fill it all up. All right, I've got two, three, four, and four. All right, so two. Two is the Eastern Pacific. I'm gonna go ahead and reveal a ship there. And it's an Ironside, the Royal Sovereign. Three. Uh, whoa, I'm going to have to reveal a ship in the European Seas. It's an iron side. And then two and four. I can put one in Cape Hope. It's a passenger. Now, what happens here? So ship placement. Um, reveal hidden ships in that or an adjacent ocean. So first, let me read the whole thing. A hidden ship in that ocean. If you can put a hidden ship in the, that ocean, you put a hidden ship. Of course, we can't do that. A hidden ship in an adjacent ocean. Well, the adjacent ocean is Cape of Good, of, um, Good Hope. Cape Horn and North Atlantic. They already have ships. We can't put a ship there. Flip a white non-warship token in that ocean or an adjacent ocean to its gray warship side. So I'm going to an adjacent ocean. I'm going to do Cape Horn. I'm going to flip this over now to its gray side. Now it goes from a passenger ship that can't attack to 
the Danmark, which is now an ironclad, which can attack. So now we're getting to the point where we're going to start flipping ships. Great. Now, what's my differential? Now, I could do a lull turn here. Hmm. On a lull turn, check every ocean with uprising cubes connected to it and the number of uprising cubes and the number of revealed ships in the ocean and roll D6. I don't want to do that. So we'll use the three and the four. Our differential is one. And I'm not going to do anything this turn. I'm just going to bank that one. We're going to go on. 20,000 leagues under the sea. This is the finale, folks. We have finally reached the finale. 20,000 leagues under the sea. Not a fact has been omitted. Not a detail exaggerated. What I now affirm is that I have a right to speak of these seas, under which, in less than 10 months, I have crossed 20,000 leagues in that submarine tour of the world, which has revealed so many wonders. <clears throat> awesome. Need a drink. Sorry. We're at the end, guys. This is play. So, the game ends. First... Resolve all adventure cards only in your tableau and place in either the pass or fail piles as indicated on each card. Do not add Nautilus upgrade cards to the pass pile yet. So, my adventure cards down here in my tableau. So, at game's end, pass. Okay. At game's end, pass. Okay. At game's end, pass. Uh, at game's end, fail. And at game's end, pass. Not too shabby. All right, next. Then, subtract the number of cards in the fail pile from those in the pass pile and score the difference in character VPs. If this score is negative, otherwise pass. Subtract the number of cards in the fail pile. Okay, in my fail pile, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, <laughs> ten, eleven. And I subtract 11 from the pass pile. From those from the pass pile. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I have 10 more left so subtract the number of failed cards from those in the pass pile and score the difference in character vps so fail if this score is negative otherwise pass all right so it's not negative so i get 10 victory points from character and characters uh, this one. So I get 10 more victory points. I'm going to move that from 30 to 40. And this is a pass. All right. Now we've got to do the adding up of the scores, which is going to take some time. So, let me move this out of the way. Let's get these dice out of the way. Let's get the game rules out. So we can figure how to score the game. 
So, conducting the f game's finale card. <clears throat> if none of the above has occurred as a result of the finale, ending the game in automatic defeat, then the game is scored. Your level of victory determined and your epilogue read. See Rule 15 in the Between Voyages Guide for defeat, victory, and scoring. If the Nautilus is in the Western Pacific Ocean, when you reveal the finale card, return to Mystery Island. The game ends immediately. If the game is automatically ended in defeat, read the motives defeat paragraph. So we are not in the Western Pacific, so that's good. So now we have to go to Rule 15 um, to see what happens in the Between Voyages Guide. So we'll pull out the Between Voyages Guide. We'll go to Rule 15, which is on page 12. All right. Defeat, victory, and scoring. You calculate your success in Nemo's War and victory points. You earn victory points in several ways, such as sinking ships, blah, blah, blah. All right, scoring preparation. Did that. Did, uh, before scoring, place all of the adventure cards in your tableau in the pass or fail piles, as instructed, which we did, and add your equipment, equipped Nautilus upgrade cards to the pass file. All right, so we get to add all these to the pass file. Pile. <laughs> Beautiful. Determine your score. When the game ends due to finale card and you are not defeated in the process of resolving it, your score is determined by counting how many victory points, both positive and negative, you have earned in that voyage. Be sur sure to comb for every icon that you have earned in every scoring category. Check the pass pile, but not the fail pile. Resource tracks... Um, these could be positive or negative VPs, depending on how well things held together during your voyage. The collected treasure box, the tonnage track, your tableau, everywhere. Greatly affecting your VP earnings is Nemo's motive, which adjusts the values of seven key scoring groups. These and the other two scoring groups, characters and scourging, are each denoted by their specific scoring icon and values. All right, so scourging the seas, victory points. Before removing any ship tokens from the tonnage track, that's this, this track here, begin scoring by determining your scourging the seas VP value. This VP value is shown above the rightmost completely filled column in the tonnage track. This value can be supplemented by certain adventure and ally tokens. <coughs> so, what does that mean? First off, uh, for seeing individual ship tokens on the tonnage track. So the scourging of the seas use the very m most right um, um, line here. But you are, this is in addition to those earned for sinking individual ships tokens on the tonnage track. <clears throat> so if you see, I have sunk these ships and they're in my tonnage track. If you look here, they give you victory points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to use these. Uh, forgive me. It's going to take forever. I know. But I'm going to remove all the ones that I already have over here. We're going to try to keep track. This is probably going to be the longest portion of the video. All right. So for warships sunk, we don't get any extra points. But they're the dark red ones. So the dark red warship is this one here. What do we have for sea sunk? We have two, three, four, zero, five, six, 
7, 8, 9, 10, <clears throat> 11, 12. So I have 12 victory points for that. We'll put one of these tokens here in the 10 and the 2 for 12. All right, so for the non-warship sunk, we get minus 1. So per, per ship sunk. That's zero, so we don't worry about that. That's one, we get minus one, that's zero. That's two, we get one. That's one minus, one minus. Three, we get two. So now we're up to three. This is four. And three is two is six. So we get six. Four non-warships. All right, that's cool. Nemo's motive. Oh, and so we don't get to use this. But we do get to get 12 points from this. So we get 10. And 2 is 12. All right. Next, Nemo's motive. Nemo's motive determines numerous victory points. Adjusted victory points for Nemo's motive. That's this here, so that's what we've been using. The motive is science. All right. So for each collected liberation, that's plate. That those are uprising cubes. For each collected liberation, place uprising cubes. Hmm. Liberation is a fist, I get times three. So I have one, two, three, four, five times three is 15. So 10, and where's the other one? And five. All right. Science discovery is the lightning bolt. Oh, let's, uh, shoot, while we're still doing this, let's see what we have over here as we do this. We did the warships and the non-warships. Let's see if we have anything here. That is a warship or non-warship. These are in my pass file. <clears throat> I don't see any ships or non-warships. Okay. So next was the liberation. There's a liberation. There's a cube. That's a liberation. All right, so that's two more. Two times three is six. So six more is 11. All right, next we're going to do the science and discovery. Now, if you look up here, my hull, if I would have been up here, I would get extra for science and discovery. Unfortunately, I was in fighting trim just below gaining any points for that, unfortunately, that kind of sucks. Let's see if we have any lightning in here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
seven. So we have seven lightning, which is science discovery times six. Well, seven times six is 42. 42 on the lightning is 40 and two. All right, now one of these lightnings had a suitcase, which is an adventure card. This one has an adventure card and this one has an adventure card. All right, so let's set those aside. Next is wonders. Wonders are the eyeball token. Now I have up here, I have the Bermuda Triangle, which is one, Lost Mayan Cities, one, Lost Cities of Dwarka, one, and Pyramids of Yanaguni. So I've got one, two, three, four. Let's get rid of those. Um, I get times four in that. That's 16. So that's a 10 and a six. Also, if Nemo was one more higher, I would get another one there. Unfortunately, he's not. So I don't get any extra bonus for that. Let's look through our cards and see if I have any of those wonders scene icons in my cards, my past deck. I have one, two, three, four. Well, I have a couple in there. All right. So I have four. One. Two, three, four. Four times four. Is Sixteen more. Uh, Twenty. Thirty. Two. Beautiful. Nice. <clears throat> Next is motives. VP multiple. If you had any science discovery times three. Doesn't even want to war, you would have five in science. For each ship tonnage track, not in warships. And for adventures. All right, so now we're up to, we're going to do adventures. Adventure cards are these little briefcases here. And let me see, what do we have? Let's look through. There's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, <laughs> ten, eleven, and twelve. Wow. Twelve of them. And what do we get for? We get plus one for each. So there's two is three, zero is one is four. Four is eight and one is nine. One is two is 11. One is two is 13. Two is three is 16. Zero is one is 17. Two is 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. That's not bad. 20, wait, we're doing briefcases. Where are you? 28. All right, so now we've done warships, non warships, adventure tokens, uh, treasures. I have no treasures. I did not save any treasures. I don't believe I have any. Oh, wait, those have been used. I don't believe I have any treasures in here. Nope. Um, next is liberation. We did liberation. We have science discovery. We did science. We did wonders. Now we have ship resources. Any negatives? We had no negatives in our ship resources, which is great. Um, I We haven't done people yet. 
Uh, scourging the Seas is 12. We already did that. And then Characters Remaining. So, this is pretty cool. We have our first officer, which gives us seven. We get, have our chief engineer, which is five plus one is six. And then we have Nadine. And what does Nadine do? His friendship, um, friendships raise each character's VP scoring instance plus one each. So this is eight and this is seven. That's 15. And we get eight for this. So that's 23 for our crew. Oh, plus one, 24. We have that. 25, 26, 27. 28, 29, 30. So, 30. And 30. I think we've done it. I think we scored everything that we can. Each character symbol has its own individual VP scoring. If Nadine Dakar is aboard the Nautilus, score plus one per instance when scoring character symbols. Attribute tokens is one, so I'm going to lose one for that. So it's only 29. 29. All right. I think I got everything done. All right. Let's add it up. What do we have here? I'm going to use this. Or I, I, I'll use this. What do we have? We have 10, 20, 40, 60, 80, 110, 150. All right, so I have 150. And then I have 9 and 8. 17, 23, 25, 27, 29, 31, 32, 10, 20, 32. So I have 182. That's not very good. That's not enough. So we played the science, and what does the science say? Science. I have 182. It's a failure. I had to get 200 to get an inconsequential up to 239. 240 to 279 would be a notable success, and then 280 to 319 is a success, and 320 plus is a triumph. So, I have 182, which is a failure. The overall failure of Captain Nemo's plans causes him to take the Nautilus and retreat completely from the surface world. Several decades later, the quest for an American female aviatrix discovers instead an unsinkable casket ashore on an uncharted atoll in the Pacific. It contains a journal detailing Nemo's life story. And after its serial publication in newspapers, it is soon disregarded as mere speculative fiction. Eventually, it is turned into a moderately successful motion picture. There you have it. That's what happened. It was just, you know, the whole thing was just a book of speculative fiction that was later turned into several movies 
which is exactly what happened. <laughs> All right, everybody. I'm going to clean this all up and I'm just going to do a quick overview of the game and uh, I'll see you at the table. All right, thanks. All right, thank you everybody. And for those of you who went through and watched all my videos of the playthrough of this game, I applaud you. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, it was a long, it was a long game. I mean, it took me about, well, about four, uh, four or five hours of playing time. Of course, I was filming and, you know, uh, trying to explain everything. One thing I, I want to say is, I play the game. I really play the game. I don't stack the cards. <clears throat> I don't go through it as fast as I can go through it. Just play the game and talk a million miles a minute i really sit down and play the game and try to enjoy the game as best i can now i will say that this game i i really enjoyed it i dig it i had fun is it a board game is it a war game i mean it really is a hybrid of both i think it's leaning much more towards towards a war game than you know a, a board game so in that aspect uh some people might enjoy it more than other people might it is definitely a solo game i know there's an expansion in here that you can play a co-op you can also play a versus Game, which I'd like to do sometime. I'd like to probably get somebody to sit down with me and try the versus um, game and s see how that goes. But uh, for the most part, hey, if I made mistakes, I apologize. I'm sorry. I think I caught a lot of them or made some corrections as I was playing. I think the worst mistakes I made were my mistakes, my my not uh, you know playing the game properly. I should have taken more advantage probably of the adventure deck to get more of the science uh, points. Oh, I did make a mistake in my calculating of my victory points. If you watch the video, I got um, 10 points for, I can't remember now what it was, wonders or, or maybe it was uh, the people. And I scored it, but then I went and I cleared the board and I recalculated everything and never gave myself back those 10 points. So yay, I got 192 points instead of 182 points, but still what is considered a failure. For my motive science, uh, of course, all of these, they have six levels of success. You can get a defeat, which is 160 points or less. You can get a failure, which is 160 points to 199 points, which is what I got. But I was only eight points away from an inconsequential. I could have gotten an inconsequential. That goes from 200 to 239. Then you have a notable victory, 240 to 279, a success, 280 to 319, and then a triumph, 320 points plus. So really what you have to do is just play this game multiple times to, you know, to grok it and figure out exactly what you can do and don't, can't do. I think I got hurt because of the science motive. The science motive is one of the lower um, notoriety track defeats. If I reach 26 notoriety, I lose the game. So I got to the point where I was really high on my notoriety and it really started you know messing with my brain and i kept thinking I got, i've got to drive that mo that notoriety down which made me do a lot of things that maybe i could have spent more time again doing the adventure deck and getting some more uh science discoveries or even wonders but i think i did pretty good it was very very fun i enjoyed it a lot i will tell you um it reminded me a lot of this, Navajo Wars. 
Nemo's War, Navajo Wars. It's GMT Games, uh, another amazing, really amazing solo game. It says one to two players, but this is really a solo game. I played the hell out of this about two years ago and got to the point where I played every scenario to achievement, to, to a good success with that. But man, what a great game. Anyways, we're talking about this. Just gave me vibes of that. Even the board set up. The board is really great, guys. Um, it has everything on it. So once you read through the rules, you can go through and just everything is explained on the board. It's done really well. And um, so you don't have any problems really going back and having to look at the rules that much. Um, I will say the there's a ton of different ways to play. Of course, the motives, there's eight different motives that you can can use. Show that again. We did science. Um, I just picked it randomly. But you could play through these multiple, multiple times until you, you know, grok each individual motive. So that can give you a lot of play. Also, um, again, I, I loved the uh, Nadine Dakar expansion it's just a, a character uh six cards and some of those character traits that you can draw a handful of them it wasn't a lot but bringing him in or even just knowing that anticipating that he was going to come in sometime during the you know the second act and then he even does some more stuff in the third act was really cool i i, I thought that was really fun um other than that, like I said, if I made mistakes, it was mostly on my, my decisions that I made during the game. But I, I liked it. I hope you all liked it. If you did, if you found any value in, in, in watching it or any fun at all, any entertainment at all, I'm going to ask please um, like and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to continue to do more. I think my next video, I'm going to do a painting update. I have to get finished. Um, I'm going to finish up my Batman miniatures, get that started, or get that finished, and I'd like to show that off. So, all right, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you had fun. Have a good day. See ya.